welcome everyone behind here in London. This is one of the main residences of the Queen who passed away just a few short days ago. And right now there is going to be a huge amount of proceedings and processions and events happening all throughout the week. Right now they're preparing the entire road. We have a huge uh, host of media right over there. So most likely BBC, CNN, Sky, France 24. Probably a lot of publications are there. And here we have Buckingham Palace itself, the huge tribute to Queen Victoria, who used to be the former longest reigning monarch of the UK. And at her time it was the Empire, the British Empire. And then soon, I assume, there'll be some type of monument in honor of Queen Elizabeth II. It'll probably be in a few years. I wonder what they'll do and where they'll put it. Tempting to go live, see if I can uh, sustain a little bit of cell phone signal in 360p video, which is very low. The thing is, there's so many people, so many broadcasters as well, clogging up all the cell phone signals. Tyler, thank you so much for tuning in. Hello, Colleen. Welcome to the live video. Mayor Sharon, nice to see you here. Hello again. Thank you so much, uh, Daily K Raynette. Welcome. So yeah, they're allowing a bunch of trucks to pass in and out because they're set, doing a, a lot of setups. I saw a huge truck filled with porter bodies. Uh, there, of course, there's a lot of broadcasting. I assume they're going to do some type of official broadcast with the BBC. Uh, so they're probably setting up their own cranes and things like that, or whatever type of shots they'll do. Johan says, glad you're back. Susie says, glad you're back. John, John nice to see you here. Hello, uh, Marianne, watching CNN. Charles is Edinburgh. Oh, yeah. He just arrived to Edinburgh because the Queen's body right now is at St. Giles Cathedral, right in the middle of the city. Hello, Felix says, nice trap, trip you're having. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it's quite an epic end to the trip, I'll say. Yvonne says, you're lucky you're so close. Yeah, it's pretty hard to get here. I would to take another long way around to get to the very front. I'll probably do that a little bit later on my own. Adam says, Queen buried. She has not been buried yet. She has, um, there's like a procession of sorts. So right now she's at St. Giles Cathedral in Edinburgh, Scotland, which is the capital of Scotland. Four hour train ride away from uh, London, England. And um, soon she'll come down here to London and I think eventually be interned or buried at Windsor Castle. Do let me know. There's a... So everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Let me show you a little bit of the gardens right behind me. Uh, let me know if you want me to point the camera anywhere around here. I'll show you the gates from this point of view over here. That's really cool. Of course, this is in honor of the late... ...who's here shaking the hands of the public. Katrina says, don't think you'll, uh, you'll ever forget this trip. Yeah, I can imagine. So here is um, basically everything that's happening. I think right now we should be at day four. No, let's see. I think we're either in, I think we're in day four. So I think the plans are changing as they go. So Charles is not in Northern Ireland. Right now he's in Scotland instead. So Sharon says, yes, the Queen will lie at the Westminster Hall until the funeral on Monday the 19th and then be taken to Windsor. Thank you so much. And let me know, will she be buried, interned, entombed in Windsor? What is going to be the deal there? Is it a tomb or is there actually a burial, like a cemetery? I'm very curious. Tamara says, love this. It's 8 a.m. here in Michigan. 
yeah pretty early in these states i had to come here early if you come here any later right now if you intend on coming it's going to be very packed so be patient uh, i entered through green park i had to walk all the way around all the way around down there and it took me a good 20 minutes to get here maybe a little bit longer i'm going to attempt to walk a little bit so stay tuned zoom in on that she'll be interned with her husband Philip oh thank you so much for letting us know buried she'll be buried oh I see okay Gwen says thank you my pleasure Gwen Oleg says my first thought is I put on the wrong eyeglasses because it looks so blurry but this 360p video it is yeah it can go higher uh, because uh, the, too much people using cell phones so the signals are clogged Susie says, you're living history right now. Yeah. Oh, yes. Sorry. So right here are the gardens. Beautiful gardens, actually. We got pr royal purple in honor of the queen, I assume. I'm not sure if they changed up the arrangement in the past few days. Tunita from Perth down under. Hey, Tunita, nice to see you here from Perth. Yeah, what's happening in Australia is very interesting. Uh, Australia, of course, is one of the places where the queen um, was the head of state or the figurehead. Uh, now it's King Charles III. Uh, Australia is a bit divided whether they want to continue on being represented by the monarch or not. Uh, it's funny, it's interesting that they're discussing that now, which I find uh, rather uh, interesting because not that many other countries are doing that right now. So here is the setup. Adam says, I forgot to ask, how was your on um, September 11th yesterday? I took the day off with my friend Marta. Uh, I ventured around, ate, enjoyed a good time. Late heading to Paris um, later today. And then. Um, and then off back to New York. Tamara says, oh, look at that line. It's so beautiful. Hello, Sally. Hello, Colleen. Hello, Chris. Welcome. All right, let's attempt to walk. Let's see if I can get at least the music on live. If I drop at any moment, sorry, guys. Bad service, but I hope you enjoyed the snippets I can show you. Hello Tracy, good afternoon. The weather looks lovely. It is lovely, yeah. Lots of sun right now. Oh, Mur says, are you never seen Spain? No, uh, my trip is coming to uh, an end. Uh, I pretty much stayed in the EU for three whole months straight. So um, there is a limit to my visa. It's three months in the EU. I could if I had the budget for it to stay in the UK or potentially go to Ireland. Uh, because Ireland allows six months stay, uh, but unfortunately, I don't have the budget uh, to stay. I have to go back to New York, do a little bit more work, and then come back traveling. Norma from Manchester, welcome. Norma, let me know what's happening in Manchester in terms of the events with the uh, Queen's passing. How's Manchester doing? Do let us know. Sam Stir says, once in a lifetime to be in England for an American when the Queen passed in 96. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was already researching about what, what would happen with the Queen if she passed back in June because of the Jubilee. And I was here just a few days after the jubilee or before the jubilee i forgot was it was whether it was before or after i was here june 19th uh do let me know but i was here just around the jubilee and wow she celebrated 70 years of rule back then and now well, she's passed towards the end of my trip so oh interesting rather poetic started my trip during the jubilee and ended my trip here Tamara says the line is moving fast. Now it's moving fast, yeah, luckily. All right, we got a better view of Buckingham from this angle, nice. 
How close can you get to the palace? Potentially I could get all the way there, but I might be spending a lot of time. So I'm not sure if I'm actually gonna do that, but it seems to be moving swiftly. I'm not sure if I'll have exact cell phone reception down there. I still wanna see a few other things in London before I have to take the train back. Ceremony of the Keys is right now with King Charles. Oh, interesting, they're doing a ceremony of the keys up in Edinburgh. Do let me know what that entails. Go and stand near the <laughs> BBC camera, it says. Okay. <laughs> so you're leaving England, England before the huge crowds show up, says Doug. You're a smart person. <laughs> you know, I would, I, would, I would stay. Issue right now is if you're a tourist, if you're not, if you're not from the country or nearby, Hotels are going to be insane right now, and, and Airbnbs. Um, so, even you have a nice budget or know someone you can stay with for a while, uh, because yeah, it'll be expensive. So I wish I could stay, but I, no, I'll be going back to New York. I also have a nice job when I go back to New York, freelance job. So, can't wait to go. All right, let me show you here. Some flowers who right by the fountain. Thank you so much. Ooh, I hear that music. I want to go see that music. Nicola says, go say hi to Lisa La Flamme. Uh, she will be with City TV. Ooh, where is City TV based? Is that a New York broadcast? That's awesome that they're here. Adam says, Action Kid is back in New York. Hope you see him. Oh, yeah, definitely. Ooh. So here we get a glimpse of the other places in London. Let me is that? I want to see it. Sharon says, The White Gazebo where all the news channels are set up. Yep, yep. Sorry from the distance. Hard to get close, but sorry from the distance. All right. <laughs> Norma says, will you be staying here for the funeral? No, I would not. Back to New York. Taking a three week break from any scheduled live videos. After that, TBD. There'll be a live video here and there at random times, but uh, yeah, I'm taking a break. Sharon says, what a beautiful day in London. Oh yes, look at all the people. Yes, there's a lot of people here. So Miss Love says the annual ceremony of the keys, which is happening right now with King Charles III, is involves the monarch be, uh, being the keys of the city and welcome to your ancient and hereditary kingdom of Scotland. Uh, thank you so much. It was. It's. Uh, seems like it's the host or the the person who's making those proceedings is the Edinburgh Low Provost. Robert Aldridge right now. You went in the wrong way. Wrong way. Yeah. Sure, so sounds like the changing of the guard, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Chris says it sounds like some march is coming your way. Yeah, there's a march down there, but there's no way I can reach it. Now I'm destined to go for the Buckingham Palace. And uh, yeah, now now it's my destiny to go for a Buckingham Palace. There's no way out. So let's go. Did 9-11 affect air travel or security of traveling? Adam, wow, that's a big question, Adam. In general, yeah, uh, uh, immensely. Uh, you can still see those effects today. There's much more heavier security than there was in the 1990s. Mm -hmm. Let me 
Apollo BBC over here. Sharon says the guards should come to to the palace so you can see them, yeah. I'm doing the equivalent of driving on the HOV line lane in <laughs> in US highways. Just followed the, the camera crew right here, pretending I'm part of the BBC at the moment. <laughs> Michael from Nottingham, welcome, nice to see you here. We got a lot of UK urbanists tuning in. All right, let me go to the palace. All right, everyone, we're gonna go to the palace. I'm optimistic. Our Saturday here was crowded, but luckily now they're allowing people to go for the palace. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Amen. Sharon says, um, blend in with the BBC, yeah. It's funny, there's a, a few guards that are actually American. It's interesting to see the... Well, you would expect to hear a British person uh, as a guard slash police, and then they're actually American. Hey, Michael says, how are you? Yeah, uh, I'm, doing, I'm doing okay, yeah, Michael. I'm, I'm you know, um, I know a lot of people are mourning. Uh, I think um, personally, it's 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 nice also to celebrate someone's life because she definitely did live a long and healthy life, and it's wonderful. I think so. I'm feeling good, and uh, I'm glad to be in this moment in history. Let me show you. So right now. We Michael asked if I visit uh, Nottingham. No, not yet. I haven't been to Nottingham. Atel from, uh, she's now in Holyrood. Holyrood in Edinburgh. Oh, thank you for letting us know. Chris says, uh, when someone lives a long life, her passing should be a celebration of a life well lived. Yes, yes. I really do admire the Irish way of celebrating the death of someone who lived a long life. Obviously, of course, Ireland is not part of the UK, but I admire that. Yeah, I'm so glad I was able to get close. Wow. I'm surprised they're allowing people to stream in front. What would you say is the uh, Palladian style, it's David? Oh, I don't know. You know, that's a good question. What is the style of the palace we're seeing? Definitely like a neoclassical. It, it's not that old. It's only a few hundred years old. Uh, so it's neoclassical, that's for sure. Exactly what type of neoclassical? I don't know. It's not Beaux Arts because that's more of a French slash uh, uh, American style. June says, thank you so much for this special opportunity. Yeah. And now we're going back to Green Park where I started. So it's only a one-way system. You can't walk either way. So you would have to do the full roundabout. So here we have notes. 
Your Majesty, rest in peace. From Iwana, rest in love. Rest in peace, Queen Liz. Thank you for the blessing. I gotta take a selfie. Sharon says, I bet your parents are proud you got to this historic moment. Will they be watching? Yes, they are indeed watching, Sharon. And I'm sure I have other family tuning in as well. And a few friends. So, yeah. Sorry. So here we're at the front gates. Oh, this is amazing. I haven't seen these. Some years she's carried out over 400 encouragements, engagements. Remarkable lady. So Patel, yes, says that she's been all around. Um, the Queen. The Queen is the most traveled monarch in recent history, if not all of world history. So 70 years, but even before she became the Queen of England. Uh, when, when she was princess and even before she was princess uh, because her uncle was the one who was the heir and abdicated but ever since then oh, yeah, she yeah. was traveling all around the realm France and many other parts around the world Kenya was where she heard uh, about the passing of her father and she's been all around the world since then she went to Ireland the Republic of Ireland of course Northern Ireland many times um, it was a historic event that she went to the Republic of Ireland. Of course, there's a lot, there was a lot of hardship between both countries. So um, it was very powerful that she went there. Let me show you here. well I mean with all respect take a good selfie if you want to always do so here outside coffee and palace this is where our queen everybody's coming from they The left side of our screen, behind the woman, uh, there's a lovely couple filming a video, and they're addressing it to their daughter, saying, "Hey, we are here in this moment to see an event in the future." Very beautiful. I'm not sure if it's a daughter that is alive or a unborn daughter, but they seem to be very happy to be here. They sense a, what appears to be a Scottish accent. Don says, you find GF here. <laughs> no, Don, no. Do not, no, not at the moment. <laughs> Maybe I should hold the sign. I'm not sure if that will be disrespectful. Probably be <laughs> not the nicest thing to do. Amazing you can get that. And, um... I am, I'm not, I decided not to put on my fancy mic because, you know, to not draw too much attention so I could be a little bit more agile walking around. So, pardon the wind. Let me show you more of the front gates. These front gates are gorgeous. There's three of them. No, yeah, three. Natalie says, was it a last minute decision coming here? Yes, it was. Last minute decision coming to London. I did not intend originally to come to London. I was tempted to do a day trip to London for my own personal pleasure. Um, but once I heard the news, 
a friend of mine based here in London encouraged me to come and I bought my tickets shortly about 20 minutes before the announcement so and I ended up spending quite a lot 280 pounds around there to get the ticket so I spent you know, about $300 uh, just to get here by train from Paris because my flight leaves from Paris and it would have been too crazy to try to change the flight in such short notice. Camilla says, hmm, you giggle a lot. I do, indeed, Camilla. Giggling is the spice of life. Had you always planned to go to... Oh, now I already answered that. Amazing that you can get that close, says Marianne. Oh, yes. Tunita, nice to see you here. Welcome. Wow. It's beautiful. All the people here. I'm so... This is awesome. It's not that crowded. So if you're here in London, pro tip, come now. I mean, it's getting full by the minute. But at this moment in time, you can have Buckingham Palace basically to yourself. It tells us that was a true selfie. I'm glad that you enjoyed the, the real selfie. The royal selfie. Of Euro Summer 2022. Final live videos. The amount of people allowed every day or is it due to the queen's passing says david so yeah people in general can come this close to the fence um they have the changing of the guard sometimes when the changing of the guard happens you can't get as close to the fence as i just did right now so i think sometimes they lock it off a little bit further out so today we got very close and i ended up touching the fence which is awesome otherwise the weekend they were already locking off the fence so you couldn't really get close it seems today they are allowing people to stream in but who knows if when well, they'll close it definitely later in the week this would not be this would be off limits because a lot of people will be coming here for for the funeral susan says so glad you made the trip Atel says the grandkids are looking after the corgis that is awesome to hear i'm so glad to hear that says uh, flowers for the queen no, I'm so glad is 360 the best quality of stream yeah right now Ron yeah too many people uh, another reason you see all these canopies all of those are news broadcasters some of them are connecting to the actual cell networks that I'm using as well so there's very poor service
Tamara says something like this may never happen in our lifetime. Tamara, um, long live King Charles III. Um, seems to be a good man of integrity. Um, but he's at 73 years old, so. Who knows uh, when it'll be time for uh, another monarch, but it will be within the next maximum 30 years, 40 years. <laughs> Maybe there's massive uh, medical advancements, who knows, but yeah, it, it, there, there is a chance that we'll have a new monarch in, in a decade or two or three. Unless if a uh, singularity happens and humans tend to live hundreds of years due to a gigantic leap in medical innovation if that happens then yeah then, then it'll be once in a lifetime who knows who knows what the future is in store maybe uh poor uh no well, not, not poor but i would say maybe uh his name is william right the the eldest son yeah william maybe william will never get to be king because uh There'll be massive medical advancements and we'll have a really, really long reigning King Charles III. Hey, Ava Creatives, nice to see you here. This is, how are you, my friend? I'm doing well. Oh, Mur says, are you wishing him death? No, 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 Mur. It is a fact of life that many of us pass the average life expectancy already tends to be in our 70s. Of course, if you're in good health and you're in the position like the king, uh, you might live well into your 90s. Who knows? Maybe beyond 100. But it is a fact of life that that is the case right now. As I mentioned, unless if there's some massive leap in medical innovation, generally people don't live, not that many people live beyond 100. Here's some of my peers. This is some type of uh, official of the of um, the palace. Oh, let me know if anyone can recognize the valet. I assume the valet. I forgot his name. Fosworth. I forgot his name, but the valet of King Charles. He should be with King Charles right now. But that guy has been with him for decades. So people don't know every king or royal has a valet, royal valet. And if you see Downton Abbey, you'll know what I mean. It's basically the, the main person who's by your side helps you put on all the cufflinks and everything. Things as simple like that. Organizes all the drives and all the trips. Make sure you have all your wardrobes and all the staff comes. Things like that. Valet is a very important job. The Queen Mother lived to 101. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, there, there seems to be some good genes there. That's good. So here are all the news broadcasts. Where's BBC? I did visit the palace uh, inside, says it's out. Truly magnificent. They even see you. They let you see the golden carriage. Yeah. Yeah, I never got the chance to go inside. But yeah, that is awesome. That is lucky of you, that's all. It is. It's been tougher and tougher in the past years to get inside Buckingham. Who knows what will happen in the future? Um, King Charles seems to be a very... A guy... A man who intends on updating the monarchy. That's why I get the feeling. That's why a lot of people speculate in news and documentaries. So who knows if Buckingham Palace will become a little bit more open and people will be able to visit. Lorraine says, dress like a guard. <laughs> Hello from the other London, says Lucy. From London, Canada. Nice to see you here. Maybe you can hitch a ride back with Air Force One, says Leo with Biden. Did Biden come over to UK? Mm, do let me know. Is the president here? Yeah, maybe I will hitch a ride back on Air Force One. Have a good ice cream with Biden. He loves his ice cream.
Susie says Biden is coming for the funeral 919. Okay, maybe I'll come back to the UK with Biden. I'll bring some ice cream. I think he'll be a fan of that. Uh, Kay says, you're better off finding the Irish national news. Yeah, let us know. what, what uh, Kay, what is the name of the Irish national news? I think they have a nationalized news, like BBC-ish type of thing in Ireland. Or whatever the big company is, do let me know. David, yes, my name is Ariel. A-R-I-E-L. Spelled it right. Michael says, I'm from the UK. No, if you can tell by my red-blooded American accent. No. <laughs> Not from the UK. I can't, can't, I can't escape my, my red-blooded accent filled with patriotic blood and flying eagles running through my veins the the essence of flying eagles flying bald eagles running through my veins i can't escape that so yeah 100 percent american emperor <laughs> picture is surprisingly clear because it is 360p yeah it's the best i can do um times like these is when uh i'm excited to have a bigger production budget rafael says are you exploring new sites to offer provide and pro to provide coverage of footage as they unfold you know that's a good question I, I could sell some of my footage or license on my footage obviously ladies and gentlemen in respect to everything that's happening i'm um, still this is still my job so I would uh, consider maybe licensing my footage. I don't know how I'll do that. I've actually never done that. I've done it for documentaries. So there's like a, two or three documentaries out there that have used my footage. Um, but yeah. Excuse me, you're the urbanist, aren't you? I am, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm Brian. I follow Brian. you occasionally on Facebook. Oh, thank you so much for yeah, tuning in. You're a great job. Hello? <laughs> Hi. 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 Oh, you're from here. In oh, the yeah. UK. I mean, yeah, yeah, I live in London. Yeah. Oh. Well, no, actually, I, don't, I live in the West Country now, but I've come up today for meetings, and uh, I just thought I couldn't let this chance go by. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, well, I'm glad you're here. Yeah, pay your respects. Yeah. That's you're amazing. doing a great job. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Well, well, where's yeah. your next journey? Where are you off to next? Stay tuned, but I'm thinking uh, Europe, Holland, Germany, or Austria. All right. Or Ireland, I'll be back as well at some point. Brilliant. Yeah. Have a good day. You take Bye -bye. care. So that was a shout out to a fellow fan from the UK nearby in the West Country. Brian, shout out to Brian. Round of hearts. Okay, so <laughs> Sharon says, nice man. <laughs> now be cheeky and uh, tell security you have to go through and meet Hugh Edwards uh, or Sophie Rathworth. <laughs> they might fall for it. <laughs> Let me see, let's see what, what's happening here. Good day, Ariel. That's so awesome to be so recognized now. Yeah, 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 that's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Shout out to Brian. Tune in on Facebook. Charles will be unique um, if he reigns for 70 years because that would make 150 years. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but he's also the oldest monarch to assume the throne. I'm not sure if all of world history, but there's a good chance. Do let me know if anyone can confirm that, but probably of all world history. But he's the oldest monarch definitely in UK history to assume the throne. Uh, before him, there was another monarch, George the something. Uh, who assumed the throne at around 63 years old. Ms. Lobb said, he figure out where you were. No, I think he, he literally just bumped into me. Uh, he mentioned he was tuning in for Facebook. He didn't seem like he was scaring the, the phone. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. I don't mind. Say, I'm always happy to say hi for a few seconds. Um, but yeah, yeah, it seemed like it was, it was more random. Uh, of course, there's a lot of people coming here for, to pay their respects.
Asking what were the guards saying before? They were saying um, to move ahead because they don't want too many people crowding. Also, they don't want anyone leaving more flowers here. So the flowers have to be left where I did the other broadcast at Green Park, which is right next to me. Isabel, so thank you so much for sending us live coverage today. My pleasure. So as I mentioned, makes me excited for a higher budget because a higher budget will be able to have a satellite connection or a bonded connection with like four cell phone networks. As an American on site, yours would be a different perspective, says Rafael. Oh, yes. You know, it's very interesting uh, as an American because the there's not that big of uh, media coverage for uh, the death of a U.S. president. Unless if they died while in office, which I think the last one, unfortunately, was John F. Kennedy. That's the one, that's the president ended up getting a lot of media coverage because of his death. And that was very tragic because he was assassinated. Um, but I think the last U.S. president to die peacefully was Ronald Reagan. Let me know. I think it was him. I think Jimmy Carter's still alive, which is amazing. That man, very kind-hearted man, very, probably already pushing beyond 100. Do let me know. If anyone can let me know if Jimmy Carter is still alive. But uh, yeah, the Ronald Reagan, I think, was the last one that passed. And that was quite a while back. So we still have George W. Bush, George H. W. Bush, um, I think Jimmy Carter, Obama, Trump, um, and right now our serving president, Biden. Mark says, Gerald Ford, did Gerald Ford survive over Ronald Reagan? George Bush Sr. died? Oh, he did. Oh, yeah, I wasn't aware. So Jimmy Carter is 97 years old right now. That's amazing. That man, very strong. He's still working. He's building has houses. Watch it. He did a news broadcast like two years ago, right before the pandemic. The man was building a house <laughs> for charity. It was amazing, uh, Jimmy Carter. Uh, like himself, with his bare hands. It, it didn't seem like it was just for the broadcast. It seemed like he knew about building houses. Uh, so that was amazing. But yeah, George Bush uh, Sr. died. And Clinton is also alive, but George Sr. George Bush Sr. died recently. Queen Elizabeth has seen 14 presidents. Really? Yeah. As queen... Wow. Truman... Who else? Eisenhower, Ford, Kennedy, Reagan, of course, Johnson. Wow, yeah, you're right, a lot of presidents. Hey, Wendy, nice to see you here. Ia says, who was president while you were born? I was born in the era of George H.W. Bush. Senior. Maureen says Roosevelt. Roosevelt, but I don't think she was queen with Roosevelt, was she? No, because she was queen after World War II. Do let us know when she when she became queen. Who was the president? Yeah, so it's interesting because here, like, uh, I don't even remember any coverage about George H. W. Bush. Um, I don't even know how I would, like, as an American, even pay my respects to H. W. Bush. I, I don't even know too much about his personal life. So it is a stark difference from the proceedings that are happening now in England and the UK versus uh, what happens in America with our presidents. The queen was co coronated during the era of Trump. I mean, sorry, <laughs> no. uh, Truman. Thank you so much. The TR <laughs> last name.
Yeah, it says uh, I was a Jimmy Carter kid. And the queen once had an intruder in her bedroom, says Chris. Yes. So this is depicted recently in the queen. Apparently the actress who plays her in that season. She's an amazing actress. I love her work. Olivia Cromwell? I forget her name. Uh, full name. But she... They show that in the show. So, ooh, there's a dragonfly. Oh my god, those are rare. Inside, there's two dragonflies. Oh my god. You can barely see it on camera. Oh, it's flying over here. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Oh, wow. This is a dragonfly circling around there. Olivia Coleman. Thank you so much, Olivia Coleman. So I don't know the story 100% by heart, but in essence, what happened was there was a man who. Um, one time got off a tour bus. He was touring around the city. I think he was English. And he got off the bus and just strolled into the palace and managed to get in. And then for a second time, he decided to try to come in and this time fully into the palace. So this man went all the way inside the palace during the night. One of the, the, the security did not know anything. They heard the alarm, they thought it was a false alarm. The one of the maids tried telling the security guard, hey, a man snuck in the other day. Um, and they did not believe her. They thought she was making it up. They thought she was like <laughs> seeing things. So they didn't do anything when they heard the alarm again. And then he actually got all the way inside, all the way to the queen's bedroom. And the queen put up the alarm. It took him, I think it was 17 minutes, something along those lines. 17 minutes for the security to come. So for those 17 long minutes, because you can imagine, very long, especially for Queen Elizabeth. There, a man standing over her in the bedroom. It's so lucky on everyone's part that nothing happened. Uh, apparently the man just chatted with her and calmed him down uh, as she was waiting for security to escort him out. But oof, the queen was very brave and apparently she did not panic. She did not freeze, which reasonably a lot of people would freeze. They would maybe even faint. They would panic. Who knows? It's natural that people would really get scared um, but apparently she stayed very calm <laughs> handled the situation and the security came and escorted him away he served many years in prison um, so he oh he served many years in prison because he was convicted of something else later something along with drugs so crazy story depicted in the crown what year did this happen i think it was 30 years ago 30 or 40 years ago so let me know he says i'd scream yeah yeah apparently she she very calmly pressed that secret button but i'm astonished that security took 17 minutes or so to get there it goes to show how things have changed because security was not as strong back then so that shows how strong-willed was queen elizabeth despite an intruder in her own room at night a man she does not know never seen before a man that obviously was not in a proper mental state that could have easily done anything from the very worst to things that are very bad that would traumatize anyone and he didn't she stayed very calm that is very admirable and i think that's very indicative of her personality and why she was uh respected as a figurehead in many parts of the world Wendy says, my room is bolted. <laughs> yeah, reasonably so, yeah. Matt, thank you so much for the extra information about the palace. That's uh, extra info about the palace. All 
All right, so we're back to Green Park. We saw the front of the palace. Soon we'll reach the flowers. I covered that in the last broadcast. Um, see a lot of trucks over here gathering. And I recommend coming here if you're here in London. Uh, it's a good time to pay your respects, especially on a Monday, maybe tomorrow on a Tuesday as well. Later in the week, probably get very hectic. There'll probably not be too much of a way to get here. So seize the opportunity if you can. The slob says, my guards are always awake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Princess Anne inherited, inherited that courage when she was a, when the kidnapper tried to snatch her over the car. That is impressive. Wow, I did not know about that. That is impressive. Where is everything going, says, where's everyone going, said David. So it's only a one-way system. People can only walk one way. I can't walk back if I wanted to. And everyone now is going towards Green Park. There's Green Park over here. And then Green Park, there's the floral, um, the place where you can drop your flowers. We saw flowers at the fence of Buckingham. They're allowing no, no one else to drop flowers. If you want to drop flowers, it has to be here in Green Park, where I live stream of, uh, about an hour and a half ago. Tamara says, uh, I love it, American in London. I wonder where that music was coming from, says Chris. Yeah, that seemed to be some type of, um, yeah, some type of guard. I'm not sure. Maybe some type of regiment was playing music in front of the other governmental building. Maybe that was St. James Palace. Wendy says, please don't go to New York. <laughs> go, don't go back, stay here. 78 bathrooms, says Susie. Oh my, yeah. Katie. I think the florist shop near Buckingham Palace now retired to the Caribbean. I, I probably made a lot of money. I mean, good on them. They they responded to the call of duty. You know, news broadcasters have to show the proceedings. I, as a live streamer, felt like it was appropriate for me to come over here. Florists had to sell their flowers. So good on them that they made a good um, money out of it. They all are respectfully charging a good amount, but they're not overcharging. Don't worry, you won't be charged a hundred <laughs> quid for a bouquet of flowers. Is it more expensive than Paris? David, yeah, yeah, London is, is, is more expensive than Paris in general. And right now, hotels and travel here is going to be way more expensive than Paris. Uh, so yeah, good luck if you want to come here, <laughs> good luck. It is doable. So pro tip, maybe if you want to see all these proceedings, a lot of cities are nearby London. So you don't need to stay in London uh, if you want to save money on lodging. So pro tip, maybe go to Brighton and you can uh, stay in Brighton. And Brighton is only like 30 minute train ride away. It's very quick to get here to London. You can even go to Canterbury. It's like 30 minutes also by high speed train. There's a lot of nearby towns and cities all around London that you could stay for much cheaper potentially uh, and save money as opposed to staying right now in London because it'd probably be crazy expensive. Uh, I like flowers waiting for you. <laughs> hey, Joe, nice to see you here. And Atel says she did manage to leave the room and lock him in. Oh, thank you so much for letting us know, Atel. Uh, Green Park covers over 40 acres between Hyde Park and St. James's Park. Thank you so much. You get around fast, that's big talk. I do indeed, yes. <laughs> well, it's Europe. It's so easy to get around in Europe. So easy. So if you want to see the flowers, check it out after this broadcast ends. I did it. I covered all the flowers. Hour, you can see everything. And uh, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to enjoy the rest of London on my own. Enjoy the views. Maybe buy a good turtleneck sweater. That's why I'm on the hunt for. I think I need a good turtleneck. <laughs> I think I deserve a good present. And I'm taking a three week break. No scheduled live videos. I may do a live video here and there. Um, patrons will continue getting content. So patrons on patreon.com slash urbanist will continue getting bonus videos of uh, Europe and then also of New York when I'm back. So if you are super urbanist on YouTube, Patreon or Facebook. 
stay tuned. You'll get more content. Otherwise, put on your bell notification button in case I go live sometime in these three weeks. And after that, TBD. Stay tuned. Everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Oh, uh, over there we call it a polo neck, says Miss Lob. Oh, good to know. Thank you so much for the... Susie says, yes, new turtleneck. Crossing fingers, I can find a good one. Um, thank you for doing this, Ariel, says Kay. My pleasure. Are you walking back to Paris and streaming it, says Ron. If I were to walk back to Paris, I would to go underneath a massive tunnel under the, underneath the channel. Uh, and that would be epic, but there's no cell phone reception down there. Uh, Tamara says, good on you. Uh, I'm guessing one more Paris live stream, says Anne. I don't know, Anne. I can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> get, a, get a hat, says Big Talk. No, I already have enough hats. Lucy, nice to see you here. Welcome. And thank you, thank you everyone so much for tuning in. Uh, let me see if I missed any other questions. Travel is a nightmare right now, says Travelista. Yes. And have you been to the Sky Garden? I have been to the Sky Garden, not this trip, but in 2019, 2018, when I covered London. And I did a live stream from the Sky Garden. Really awesome. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Patreon.com slash Urbanist. Uh, if you want to see extra content of the UK, you can tune in from the extra content of February. But you'll see extra content still from Netherlands, from Paris, and from many other parts of Europe. And you get access to the Greek ones, the Italian ones, Mexico, uh, Seattle, Chicago, Washington, D.C. All hosts going to Patreon.com bunch of extra live videos and I mean not live videos 360 videos tours of house museums and museums that are not published publicly so if you want to get access to that patreon.com slash urbanist I'll play it one more time thank you everyone so, so much for your support because of patrons I was able to spontaneously come here and spend a whole lot of money to take that Eurostar because Eurostar is really not that expensive usually but extreme circumstances called for extreme prices. So <laughs> patreon.com slash urbanist. Thank you so much for your support. Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Have a good day, everyone. From Buckingham House and Green Park in the proper British way. Cheerio.